もしやコスモではコスモミッツミフリーコスモ AP ラミデュアリースポーツ OK、Welcome to Part 2 of my 76 Cosmo Restoration The last time we gave the car a good clean up and now it's time to pull the engine There's nothing wrong with this one I'm just going to、uh, build something a little better for it Someone had the timing way advanced, and we're stuck. Unsurprising. After being in here for 30 something years, that it's a little bit stuck. She wants to come out. There we go. This alternator will not be going back on. It's like a 60 amp unit with an old external regulator that. Probably brand new, put out a total of 40 amps on a good day. Since this car is receiving fuel injection and an electric fan and a few other goodies, 60 amps is not going to cut it. I guess I should hold the other side of that bolt. Looks like somebody pre loosened it for me. And other hoses disconnected. The carburetor should pop right off and then go directly into the garbage where it belongs. Actually, I'll probably sell it on eBay because they're quite valuable. There we go. Look at that. I even got all the hoses first try. Get rid of some of these emissions hoses. Someone's been playing. This is not the proper way to block a hose. I think this is the air control valve for the secondary air injection. You know what? It's not. That's in the same place it always is, down by the carburetor. I really don't know what this is. Someone's going to ask me why I didn't drain the coolant and pull this upper rad hose before I take off the air pump. But I have to go under the car to remove the heat shield and thermal reactor. So I didn't want to get coolant all over the floor. Air pump's not going back on. I think the space will be occupied by something a little more fun. Short bolt. Really short. Never remove air pump. We've just done something horribly wrong. So I wrestled around with some of the bolts holding the exhaust manifold slash thermal reactor on underneath the car, and it just looked like a big pain in the ass to remove. So, whoops. So I'm leaving the exhaust manifold on and、uh, pulling her off once,、uh, once I get the engine out of the engine bay. 
For now, I'm just disconnecting the exhaust at the manifold. I had to cut one of the thermal reactor lines, which kind of sucks because I would have liked to preserve such a oddball system, but such is life. We're off. A thermal reactor. I wonder how much of a mess removing these power steering lines will cause. I can't imagine that after all these years there's still fluid in it. And it does not look like I can remove the power steering pump without first removing the pulley. Oh, oh, apparently there's a lot of crap in there still. Yuck. Seems to be really nice about this car is most things are coming off really easily. It's pretty clear this thing's never seen the winter. I gotta preserve the power steering because I'll be reusing it. Yuck. Oh, look at that. For once, the strap wrench actually worked. There we go. And the wrench is trapped forever. Power steering bracket. Well, I think before I go any further, I'll drain the fluids. Mmm. Wonderful. Now I have to pee. Let's drain the fluid the old-fashioned way. By making an enormous mess. I guess the nice thing about electric fans uh, is that they're a hell of a lot easier to work with than this clutch fan. The only way to get these bolts out, it seems, is with a strap wrench. And half the time, strap wrenches just sit there and slip. Now, the fan just comes out of the front of the water pump, eventually, and then left in the shroud. Bloody front oil cooler lines are a weird size. I just never have. So, nine times out of ten, I end up just using vice grips. Now this rear line is 23 millimeter, and any person who's worked on a rotary has a 23 millimeter socket in their toolbox for exactly this purpose. There we go. transmission first or leave the transmission in place. In this case, because the older rotary is mounted in front of the engine, if you remove the transmission first, uh, the engine's going to flop down at the back. And 
it's probably very annoying to try to wrestle with the engine mounts while pulling the engine and leaving the transmission in place. So, in this case, I'm going to pull both the engine and transmission at the same time. But, I think I have to get this stuff off first. Oh, joy. I know what this is. Having never done this before, you almost think I know what I'm doing. Well, it's finally time to get a lifting chain on here and lift this sucker out of the car. As always, the front lifting point seems to be missing, so the bolt will do the job. She's coming. This is easier with two people. And I'm glad I ran out of quick time because I have just left a lake of transmission oil on the floor. So much on the shop floor. Oh my god. I guess I didn't completely drain it. It's only going to be a slight, horrible, horrendous mess. Oh, oh, oil pan's clear. too bad. Uh, next up I'll just put it on the stand and then I can uh, start assembling it.